This is a quarantine zone in Beni, a city in northeastern Democratic Republic of Congo. Health workers here are trying to stop the spread of the deadly Ebola virus. As of June 2019, it's killed more than 1,400 people, making it the second worst outbreak ever behind the West African outbreak of 2014. And although there's an Ebola vaccine, responders are struggling to contain the disease, raising fears that it could spread to neighboring countries, causing yet another international health crisis. In August 2018, the Democratic Republic of Congo declared a new outbreak of the Ebola virus in North Kivu province. There have been more than 2,000 confirmed cases so far, and the situation is getting worse. While it took eight months to reach 1,000 reported cases, it took just 71 days to double that figure. Most cases are in two provinces in DRC, North Kivu and Ituri. And in early June, it spread to Uganda. If the analogy is to a fire, um, it's an outbreak that slowly smoldered. This is the 10th outbreak of Ebola in DRC. Just weeks before the outbreak in North Kivu was announced, another had been tamped down in Equator province. But this is the first outbreak in an active conflict zone. It's estimated that there are more than 100 armed groups operating in the area, and clashes with local security forces pose a constant threat to civilians. The situation in Ituri province has worsened since the middle of the last week, with multiple attacks involving the Hema and Lendo groups. The lack of access to communities and attacks on treatment centers and workers is making this epidemic hard to contain. More than 300,000 people have been forced to flee violence in the region in the month of June alone, which poses a problem for responders who are trying to isolate people with the virus and track down everyone they've come in contact with. Cities like Goma, which has a population of more than 1 million people, are on high alert. There really is the feeling on the ground that, that it spreads so quickly because they can't respond adequately. As one, one guy from UNICEF told me, like every day that we miss a chance to respond to this, it gets worse. That's Sally Hayden, a freelance reporter who has been covering the outbreak in North Kivu. People are quite frightened. Uh, they're still kind of trying to figure out what's going on. I mean, around Benny where I was and around Goma, there are checkpoints um, constantly. Like people with thermometers will take your temperature, they'll make you wash your hands with chlorinated water and that's just driving around a city. Together, Congo's health ministry, the World Health Organization, and multiple NGOs are trying to get the situation under control. Responders are trying to vaccinate as many people as possible, but misinformation and mistrust of foreigners is rampant. Some people believe that it's not real. They believe that it's the government trying to quell opposition or that it's made up by foreigners. There are also a lot of rumors around like, if you go to a treatment center, they say you might be killed or your organs might be harvested or if you get a vaccination, it might kill you. We always see challenges when Ebola or another hemorrhagic fever virus is new to an area. Lots of questions, lots of concerns, lots of uncertainty, and it's an ongoing concern in terms of how to build trust within this community. Border travel is another reason this particular outbreak has been so hard to stop. It's estimated that every day, 20 to 30,000 people cross the porous border separating Congo and Uganda, and most do so at informal crossings like this river. Screening checkpoints are dotted along the border in an effort to prevent the disease from spreading to Uganda. And similar efforts have been set up along the border of Rwanda, Burundi, and South Sudan, which has no formal healthcare system after years of conflict. Past outbreaks of Ebola have been subdued by isolating the sick and vaccinating everyone that person came in contact with. But that strategy is not working this time around. The UN has stepped up its response to the crisis in recent months, but has stopped short of declaring it an international public health emergency. It was the view of the committee that the outbreak is a health emergency, but it does not meet all the three criteria for a public health emergency of international concern. Efforts to end the outbreak are expected to continue well into 2020. And until the root causes of instability in the region are addressed, the fight against the virus will likely continue to be an uphill battle.